take off the speed controller and the motor and the chain, the back half is going to get completely changed uh, once I get the rest of the parts. So I'm going to get that out of the way first. Then I'm going to pull the blue wheels off and use those for a prototype. Let's see, it's Monday, March 29, about 9.30 in the morning. I'm not going to do much talking, the breeze is kicking up already. Trailer rebuild. Okay, um, the issue is those little wheels, those 20 inch wheels that I'm using, are not even lasting as long as the handcart wheels were. The wheels are fine, the bearings are wearing out. Each wheel has two bearings and on each of those wheels, one bearing is bad. So I got one good bearing, one bad bearing. And it's, it's really dragging. The way I put this together, I actually welded what the axle is in such a way that I can't get the hand cart off of this. What I'm going to do is remove that axle. We're going to put on this assembly, which has its own bearings on the axle. Those roll really easy compared to the 20 inch wheels. Those are 26 inch bicycle wheels. So I'm going to move it back to that. And in the process, I'm going to completely remove that hand cart because it's really heavy. This kind of started off, just kept adding parts to it. And as long as it rolled, it was fine. But man, you really notice the weight sometimes. So I thought, well, if I can cut the weight down. Yeah, anyway, let's get down to some grinding in here.
guy for a new clip. I'm gonna take a break. So, the way this is set up, when I made these wheels originally, I took out the bearings and I welded inserts in so that I could key them to the shaft. This was gonna be the driven axle for turtle. I tested this once for a trailer earlier but going around a corner when both wheels were locked, it's like no differential. It wouldn't turn very good. So what I did is this side is locked to the axle. That side I unlocked it, but it still rolls on the axle.
so much nicer. Girl's really nice. Okay, so that's basically the same height as the bicycle, so that doesn't really matter too much. I'm not gonna sweat that. I think I'm gonna take a break, get a drink. A little bit of springiness is fine. I don't have any suspension except for the tires. A little bit of give. That's one of the nice things about steel is it bends a little bit. It's got a little bit of springiness to it. You can actually use that to it. So I just made this piece here, which is really hot still. Don't touch that. Um, so I just made a short piece that fits inside. This is U-channel. And the square tubing is sized to fit inside the U-channel. This is all made from school bus seat parts. I say that like it's one word, but when I bought the school bus, I took the seats out. Ended up throwing all the padding away, but I kept all the metal. Okay, so this is all made from that. So all these weird bends, that was somewhere on the seat. So I just tried to find spot, spots where, you know, took advantage of it. So this was the original hitch that was on the hand cart. So I kept that. And it's got just enough slack that it can move. And then I made a new piece that fit down inside of this piece, and then I welded it all the way around, so that's nice and solid. Honestly, if I would have made this piece a little longer, I wouldn't have needed to add a piece. It's, I, you know, the square tubing isn't that much stronger than the U-channel. You know, so this is all square tubing. This piece is U-channel, okay? I'm not looking for that extra last little bit of strength. That's just the, happened to be the piece that I picked up, so, yeah, anyway. Um, kind of at the end of the day, I'm like, ah, I don't feel like doing it anymore. So since we're doing this for fun, let's do it tomorrow when it sounds like it's fun again. But it was a good day. So basically as it is, the trailer will work. I can use it with the bicycle again. What I want to do is add the brackets or a, more of a platform or a tray or a railing to where I can put the black toad on there because what I found a, a few times going for packages, yeah, this wind is going to be bad. I would end up with the the main part full of the packages, and so I would just hang the tote off of the front of the tow bar. So what I really want to do though is make a set of brackets or something that the tote will just sit into like it belongs there. Anyway, yeah, very happy with how it turned out so far though. It's it's so much lighter. I didn't realize how heavy the other trailer was getting. I just kept adding stuff to it. And one day I picked it up and I'm like, oh man. All right, 12.48 on the 30th of March. Trailer be done. At least this iteration.
So I'm hoping this is the last iteration of the trailer for a while. 26 inch wheels, bicycle wheels. These were the drive wheels from Turtle. The axle is on bearings. The wheels are keyed to the axle, but I unkeyed one wheel so that I can still turn because otherwise it would bind up and it wouldn't steer right. The railing on top is electrical conduit. I actually welded littler sections together because I'm running out of pieces. The tote just sits in there real nice now. It's actually empty at the moment, but I made this to fit the tote, so quite often when I get little packages, I can put them in the tote and then leave room for the big packages. I always take the tote. It's got some of the tools I use and so on. So it just made sense to have it. One of the adjustments that I uh, made though on the design on this one, I moved the axle back a little bit. The last version, the axle was too centered and I had uh, a tendency for the load to balance too well and so that left the, the front of the trailer bouncing up and down. So I ended up moving the tote to the front just to push the trailer down a little bit. So this way when I pick up my packages at the post office, I can kind of feel which one is the heaviest and decide where to put it. So that I get more um, down weight on the tongue is better as long as it's not too much. I think that was one of the problems I had earlier. The hand cart, the axle was all the way in the back and so all the weight was pushing down on the back tire of the bicycle. So that didn't seem like it worked out as well. The rest was in the video. I just finished this loop here and I found a piece of plywood for the decking. That just keeps things from falling through. I had a few different ideas, but this works really good. I think it'll probably stay without falling out if it's got tools in it. It's not going to pop out of there. If I need to, I can still bungee it down, but it would be nice if I just didn't have to. Later on when I get Turtle put together, the way I'm looking at it right now is I'm just going to set up Turtle to be able to pull this same trailer so I get some more use out of it. And as it sits now, 26 inch wheels and the bicycle is 26 inch wheels. So I'll have common tube sizes and so on. So if I carry one spare tube and I get a flat tire, I can just pop it off real quick and put a new tube on and then patch the, the old tube when I get home. And if this looks kind of familiar, it's because this part of the trailer was actually mounted onto the hand cart before. And I kind of got, got to looking at it and I'm like, I really wanted to overbuild the trailer. I wanted it to be super strong. I didn't want to worry about it, but I got to thinking about it. I'm like, well, I'm taking twice as much weight as I need just for the trailer. It was really heavy. So I thought if I could cut some weight down, that would make life a lot easier. And so kind of looking at it, I'm like, well, I'll just take it apart. Plus I was having trouble with the wheels I was using on the trailer before. The, those axles started wearing out. So yeah, this is what basically two days of work here this time, plus reusing half the parts from last time. But a lot of the parts that I make, it's wasted time because I'm recycling old metal. I got to scrape the old paint off, grind the old rust off dig through the piles, find pieces, instead of just cutting something from new, it would be a lot faster. But this is what I got, so this is what we're doing. Anyway, I'm going to go pick up my stuff now. Um, unfortunately, after yesterday, I still had to bring almost everything out anyway. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for now.
has been blowing all freaking day. But with the headphones, I don't hear it, so that helps. Little victories, right? Yeah, this is typically how I do this, especially when I'm in the middle of something. Flip the lid of the toad over, put all the loose parts on that. And there's one up there from all the other tools I use regularly. And under the table, there's a cardboard box that all the welding clamps are in. And a uh, milk crate for the grinder and the welding helmets. Kind of a sort of a system. Things I put away, I can actually find. The other stuff is a little sketchy. But, is what it is. Yeah, that felt good. I haven't got to play with the welder for a while, so. And up here, all the clamps hanging. And other random chaos. Some parts. This is gonna be sprockets for turtle and other projects. Bought a bunch of metric bolts, leftover plumbing from the last project. This is the hardest part right now, honestly. If I finish something, I put it away. When it's not finished, it ends up staying out because I don't really have a way, I don't have a place to put some of this stuff. And when it's active, when I'm actually building something, I want to keep it where I can find it, but then you know, for instance, turtle, I stopped for months. So as I ordered parts, I just kind of ended up on the countertop here, the workbench. So that's no good. But eventually I'll, well, as I finish things, then I can start kind of putting things away. And I hate taking the time to put it away if I'm in the middle of building something. So this stuff I can find, I just have to be careful where I put things. Yeah, okay, break time.